Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in today's video we're talking tactical shotgun. Well, in reality, we're talking tactical shotgun in combination with a really cool weapon light. This here is the Brynite XP22 Scorpion. A weapon light, I think for me, that should be just about perfect. Now, I've run a lot of great weapon lights here. You can see my TLR RM2 from Streamlight. Fantastic light, no problem at all. It's been great with the one sort of exception and it's not really an exception. It's just the reality of a pump shotgun. As I operate, you know, the pump, the light moves, it shakes. It's been fine, no problem, no quality issues. It's just from the consistency of the light and the beam and the pattern, well, it moves. So is that distracting if push comes to shove? Hard to say. So what I thought I'd do today is talk about this XP-22 Scorpion. I believe that if things go the way I think it's going to go, it'll sit on top of the rail on top of the receiver, and hopefully the shadows won't be too bad from the barrel, too bad from the forend, but there's only one way to figure that out, and that's to get into this. So again, what we're gonna do, we're gonna get this mounted up. I'm gonna go through it, have a little bit of a discussion. We're gonna check it out indoors, see if it's gonna work for my close quarter tasks. Then we're gonna get it out to the range for some practical shooting to make sure this can handle the percussive nature of my 12 gauge shotgun. But with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now, before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Brynite who did provide this for review. Now, Brynite is a company whose flashlights I've covered quite a bit both on my Outer Limitless channel and here on Outer Limitless 2. But when it gets down to that tactical side of things, well, here on Outer Limitless 2, will this XP-22 Scorpion do what I need it to do? Now again, this is gonna be an option that sits on top of my shotgun. This here, this is the Mossberg 590 Thunder Ranch Edition all laid in with appropriate mounting points. I do have a pick rail on top, shouldn't be a problem, and I'm hoping this will sit nicely on top of the firearm and not really cast too much in the way of a shadow. And so now as we get into this first, you can see the Streamlight TLR RM2. Now this does sit below the pump, and you can see nice and flush. So when I lay this down and put it away, Inside the case, everything sits down fairly well, with the one exception being you do end up with that pressure switch on the side, so it does bump out just a little bit. If I set it down this way, pretty flush, but well, I get kind of into my cradle here that holds spare ammo. So I have a couple of little wonky things going, so I don't necessarily think that the fact that this sort of sticks out and bulges on both sides will cause me a problem. And keep in mind, this is a dual head gun light and so as we get into this little sticker here peeling this out of the way and sliding this out that is easy and nicely done from Brynite here you can see the light itself a really cool form factor slim and low profile for the most part and you can see the recharging cable port on the front additionally inside the box here let's see what else this comes with now I have had Brynite flashlights in the past that do leverage pretty much this same cable. It is a proprietary cable. You can see your USB adapter. And then going to this little pin, this does fit right on the front. You'll see it magnetizes into place and that does charge the light. Additionally, in here you can see the user's manual and then a warranty card. So pretty straightforward. Now as we look at the actual form factor, very nicely made. This has an aluminum construction with a little bit of, and I don't know if you'd really call that knurling, but it kind of is just a little bit of texture there. Really cool. Now on this side, you can see this is your clamp and it should have basically a 1913 spacer. Now there is what looks to be the ability to unscrew this and remove it if you need to. I don't know if that's gonna be necessary, but we'll certainly give it a try. Then back on this side again, here you can see your push button and then the dual lenses. So if I hold this down, it probably came fully locked out. 
Oh, here we go. Super long press there, but it's now on. So yeah, that was locked out and it took a real long press to get that to come back on. Um, I'd say maybe five full seconds, um, which actually looking at the instructions does say five seconds will enter the unlocking mode. Pressing down, that's momentary. So you can see as I press that down, momentary. And then a single press there is going to lock the light on. Now this basically has a high mode of 400 lumens. Double press here. That's going to be your turbo strobe. And if you double click it real quick, it'll stay on. Strobe again, 400 lumens. The high mode here is about 70 minutes of runtime. The strobe, that's going to be about 100 minutes of runtime. This has 13,250 candela, which basically has a rough beam distance of 230 meters. This has an IP66 water resistant rating and has impact resistance to one meter. So generally speaking, I mean, not a huge amount in the way of lumens at 400 lumens, but candela at 13,000 is pretty good. Usually once you get above 10,000, it starts to become pretty fun. Nice concentrated beam. So 13,000 should be pretty good overall for a general home defense light. Now, as we take a look at this, you'll notice I had some covers on top here. Now, this is definitely going to be in the way of my sights. I will not be able to look directly down my sights, but for a home defense shotgun, Quite frankly, how close do you have to aim? Well, fairly close, but not crazy close. And as I take a look at the distance here, you can see I am gonna have to remove a couple of these covers, which at this point should buy me the space I need for the weapon light. And I think as we get into this here, opening this up, it has a bit of a spring. So yes, as you take a look at this here, that is spring mounted. So just opening that up enough to the point where I can actuate that spring, fitting that nicely on top of the firearm. Now, if I'm not careful, you can see already, this will get in the way of one of the shells. So the question is, can I offset this kind of more towards the front and buy me a little bit of clearance? And the answer to that is kind of yes, but it's not quite as secure because that 1913 section with that little spacer there is not indexed. But at the same time, I do truly believe this should hold on tight enough if I crank this down. So I'm just gonna tighten all of this up. Very simple. And that is more than sturdy, nice and firm. And if you look, it actually has a coin slot, which I really don't think you need this, but grabbing a nickel and just kind of tightening that down a little bit. You can see at this point that should clear, give me the ability to get my shells in here, yet access the weapon light on top of the firearm, which at this point you can see right on top. Now, as I get on this and I shoulder mount it, I did have a space underneath these covers where I could technically kind of look down and see the bead. The light does obscure that, so I don't, really have perfect vision down on my sights, but I can tell you as I mount this, just with two eyes open, I can pretty much tell to like the 90% mark where my shots are gonna hit. Now the range is gonna see whether or not I am accurate in my statements, but I do think I'm pretty well on target even if the light is in the way. So mounting this here, I'm gonna to have to get up on top of the light, but for a, I would say, um, home defense shotgun, that's probably gonna be okay. Now, what about the shadow? Shadow's not too bad. And actually, as we look at it in the distance, you can see now as I get on the door, that works just fine. That's not really causing any sort of problem. And that's gonna give me an indication again, just straight down where my shot's gonna be at that hot spot. Now, keep in mind, the light is a little bit above the barrel, but not a big deal. I mean, the reality of the situation is, if I aim straight for that hot spot, 
You think it's going to cause a problem? I'd say so. So if I had a little shot in there of various sizes, no problem. My double up buck's not going to be an issue. Even if I was to send a slug out the end here, that's going to make a mighty nice hole pretty much, pretty darn close to the middle of that hot spot. So very nice. Not a ton in the way of shadow coming from the barrel. And I greatly like that about this. And so to me, the actual reality of the home defense tactical shotgun, and I'm not going to say, and I don't want to sound complacent, that like it's sloppy to begin with, but this to me gets me exactly what I need. A nice beam of light, fairly flat to the top of the gun. I can pretty much come darn close to getting right on those sights. I know where my shot's going to be, but now my pump is completely unobstructed. I can operate this with nothing in the way. There's nothing to bang into. The light is steady. That's something I didn't get with my other options. So right now, this is a leading contender where A, it does what I need to do from a functional standpoint. I am able to actually clear the side of this. So that's the next thing to test really quick, which right now, if I test some dummy rounds, this should go in there and it does clear. It's not rubbing, it's not banging. I have no problem at all. I can certainly go from the top, which is the side where I'd wonder about the clearance. From the bottom, that's certainly not gonna be a problem at all, so that works out just fine. And it looks like I'm gonna be able to manipulate this as I need. So again, just sort of playing around and practicing here with some uh, dummy rounds and snap caps or whatever you wanna call them but you can see it definitely working here. No problem, no worries. So generally speaking so far, pretty nice from the XP22 Scorpion. And just another simple little subtlety, you can see this all sitting down just fine down on the surface. So if I'm putting this away, putting it in a case, I don't believe the light is really gonna get in the way of anything I was doing. And in fact, fits fairly well, all things considered. So at this point, there's really only one more thing to do, and that's get this out to the range. All right, and so now out here at the range, this is far less about my ability to actually throw light at distance and really more about the light's ability to sustain 30 shots with a 12 gauge shotgun. If I'm gonna use this for home defense, I'm not really worried about the long distance throw, but the only thing I can do at this particular range is throw some slugs down range. So I have a target set up at 25 yards right now. I'm gonna use a little bit of intuitive sighting in here. I can't get completely on my sights, but I can get darn close. I'm gonna give this a go, see how the light actually sustains the percussive action of the shotgun. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna turn this on, just leave it on. We're gonna see if it actually can sustain. So going for the first five shots here, let's give this a go. Five shots there so far, looking good. Let's see how we did. Now first five shots, clearly you can see one, two, three, and then I lost a couple left. This is almost not what I'm going for. I mean, of course I'm going for a mid-mass shot. And again, keep in mind, with that light on there, I can't completely see my sights. So at 25 yards, do I have the ability to hit a center mass? Well. You know, if I'm missing a couple of them, that's not going to do. So I do need to make a little bit of an adjustment. Now, keep in mind, again, this is my home defense shotgun. So I will realistically be using shot and at that much closer distance, not typically at 25 yards. But let's see if I can make an adjustment for the next five shots. Let's put this on the uh, strobe just for the fun of it. Hopefully that's a little better. Light is still on. Clear. It's not loosening up at all. So, so far so good. 
All right, so now round two. We have one, two, three, four, and I don't know, I almost feel like that could either be a second shot that I hit or that's the, uh, the wad. I'm not too sure, but certainly one. I don't know, this isn't the easiest to see, but what I did hit is all on the target, so at least I'm hitting the body. Round three, going out to 50 yards. Again, trying for some intuitive shooting. Keep in mind, again, this is less about me hitting the target and more about testing the light for durability. So, five more shots here. As we get the light on again, we're just gonna go straight up with that straight mode. Let's do this. see so as we come up on 50 yards definitely a disappointment <laughs> I have one that's barely on these ones were for them uh, round one so maybe I should mark those round one so yeah this is uh, certainly not ideal so one this is round three and uh, yeah, this guy's still alive at 50 yards, so my obscured sights are definitely not working well in this regard, but let's try it again. Second chance. All right, so next five at 50 yards. Four, five. Hopefully I can get this one on target. All right, at this point, Going tactical strobe. All right. Light's still on. Nice and tight. No problem. So far, so good. And so clearly, you can see my shots are left, so I'm probably missing most of these left, if I had to guess, now that I'm out at 50 yards. So that's a little bit of a disappointment. Of course, having the sights obscured is going to have an impact there. Um, you know, my plan was to go out basically to 100 yards at this point, but if I'm not hitting 50, how am I going to hit 100 I should be able to see the sand splashing at 100 yards. So, what the hell? Let's give it a try. Hopefully at 100, I can at least hit something. But, we shall see. Light on. pretty far right not great but it is what it is let's go last five here this point I mean durability test it's a pass so that worked very well 
for that reason. In terms of my ability to see, whew, that's tough. I knew that going into it. So maybe put that on a riser. That might do it. And so a couple final data points worth considering. As I turn on the light inside, you can see more than enough light. A little bit of a shadow off in the distance, but not too bad. And this is about as far of a shot as I would have to take inside for a home self-defense scenario. So at this point, as we get this into working order here, I have a laser in the cartridge. And if I had to get on target here roughly, it is a little high. So as you can see, I was probably shooting high the entire time, making a little bit of an adjustment here. That's better. Actually, now with both eyes open, I can come darn close to getting this on target. And in fact, if I'm careful, I can kind of see the bead. I'm seeing the wrong ghost image. That's the one right there. So now that I'm more familiar, I pick up the right ghost image I can come pretty darn close and considering let's see that's the wrong one this would take a little bit of practice but over time I could get it there and so although not perfect inside, I can get a little bit closer and keeping in mind, of course, at that point I would have buckshot, which you do still need to aim. I'm not being you know, ignorant to that fact, but the shots are fairly close for indoors, close quarter, and what I would call pick up the firearm intuitive shooting. So this definitely does get in my way a little bit. We're gonna get outside for some beam shots in a little bit so I can see how this is outside, but real quick, one last thought and idea, which would be some iteration of a red dot in combination with the light. Now, granted, this does get just a little bit in the way, but you can still get on this pretty easy, all things considered fairly quick and still manipulate the light. So there's no problem. It would be a little bit difficult for the pressure switch part of it, but at the same time with a pump shotgun, I don't think that's realistic. But now with the red dot, and I am getting up on target and perfectly on target. You can take my word for it. That is almost exactly centered in the target. So that works very well, gets my optic up above the light, and this to me is, I think, the configuration that would work best. I could actually get an intermediate riser here and bring this down a little more flush, or uh, it's about perfect for my height of my eyes. So yeah, that might be just about right. So a little bit kind of experimenting here with different opportunities, but this might be about the best. And so now as we get outside for some beam shots, keep in mind the fact that my yard is approximately 25 yards long. So this is the effective range that I had for my, call it intuitive shooting. Now here, as we turn on the light, you can see the beam, very nice beam, more than enough light. A good defined hot spot, nice and sharp right in the middle with a good amount of flood. I can definitely see as I navigate around, that's a good part of this, but at the same time, the ability to leverage this to clearly identify a target off in the distance. The dual heads perfectly aligned as they center with that hot spot right in the middle, beautifully done, and you can see all the way up into the tree line, no problem. And again, as I double press here, that's gonna be that tactical strobe, so very effective. So to me, this is going to be a great option for home self-defense. It really doesn't need to be anything more than this. So the lumen output is more than enough and the candela is perfect. I'd say this is a very effective light for that shotgun. Generally speaking, very good. Turning around here and reflecting this off of the fence, you can see the two beams coming together to form that centralized hot spot. Again, a nice beam, good amount of flood off to the sides, just a nice overall pattern. 
very effective. And so, all right, guys, there you have it. A look at the XP22 Scorpion from Brynite. Again, generally speaking, a little bit cumbersome for my needs, but at the same time, it actually works fairly well. I do like the overall style. I do like the overall shape. I think mounted here on top is about the best I'm gonna do. And then in combination with the red dot, it's actually pretty good. I do like this setup. It's getting a little bit built out, but at the same time, more than manageable. So generally speaking, I am happy with it. Now, a few things. Of course, the beam, the lumen output is not incredibly high, but it does have reasonable candela. So for your ability to positively identify your target, that's your first objective. Second, am I really gonna be using this light out at distance? Not really. Is this intended for a rifle? Maybe. Is it intended for a handgun? No. So rifle, shotgun, Mm, rifle probably yes it would be fine but for me I really did want to see it on the defensive home defense style shotgun and I think there is a place for it it's not too bad in the way of a shadow from the barrel it really didn't bother me and the beam quality all in is very nice it is a good amount of light a nice hot spot in the middle decent throw and does exactly what I need it to for the home defense not to mention the fact that it fits nicely inside my case so all things working for for the most part in my favor with the one exception being my ability to see the sights now in combination with the fact that i already had the pick rail on here my sights were already kind of obscured i didn't have the ability to look right down the receiver and into the bead so i kind of need to do something anyway dropping this red dot on top makes it all viable does it look okay I kind of think so. I think it works. I mean, not that looks are everything when it comes to home defense firearms, but at the same time, just don't want anything that's completely out of place. I feel like this works. It gets me right on target. The red dot's perfect. I can adjust it for different distances if I need to. And the fact of the matter is the light working very well for the close quarters. So all in all, pretty good test. I'm interested in the fact that this took a pretty good pounding with 30 straight shots. No worries. No problem at all hasn't loosened up even a little bit so it's good and it's secure it's sturdy it's well built and it can take a pounding so that for my needs definitely worked and so all in all, again, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Brynite who did provide this for review and for the rest of you. If you like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless channel, which is more of my primary gear. On that channel, I cover everything from hiking, camping, and backpacking excursions, all the gear that goes with it. So from sleep systems, shelter systems, knives, axes, backpacks, flashlights, you name it, that's my Outer Limitless YouTube channel. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.